Hi, I am François Laguna, CTO at Stupeflix. We are huge fans of Python and we always wanted to contribute back. That's why we decided to release today Jarvis, a tool we've been using for a few months. We've been inspired by Brad Victor talk Inventing by Principle and the Kickstarter Lighttable project. So let's have now a little less conversation and a little more action. Let's start Jarvis. MX bindings are built in using Pymax, but interfacing with other text editors would be easy. By default, the last entry point is reloaded. Let's run our test file instead. We will get back later to this 3D example. The first command is debug. Just import it from jarvis.command and you will be able to output some data to the debug panel. It can be text, variables, and so on. As you can see, as soon as you save your file, the code is re-executed and the display will be updated on the right. This is similar to the Django test server, which reloads your web app as soon as you save your file. If an exception is raised, it will be displayed in the error pane. If only your main file was monitored, it would be of little interest. Fortunately, Jarvis is following every import you make, so if a single file is modified in import tree, everything will be reloaded. Jarvis is using some low-level Python tricks, so the reload is light fast, even with large code base. Being able to display some value using debug is useful. But adding debug statements right in the code is not very satisfying. While running your code, Jarvis will use Python tracing abilities and will record local variables for each line of your code. Better than debug is live inspection at any place in your code without any delay. To speed up this AV process, only the files for which you requested inspection are traced. In Emacs, just use ginspect vars, but of course some shorter k binding. Here is a real life example. If the line is executed several times, you can see that you get one set of vars, one for each time. Let's get back to the 3D animation we've seen at the beginning. To do so, I just open the unit test file and use the Jarvis command test this. This animation is made using OpenSync Graph, a library that provides powerful services on top of OpenGL. To display a sync graph, just use the debug OSG command in your code. It's very easy to extend Jarvis. I wanted to live test a custom GLSL shader, so I just added it to the set of monitored files. Now, each time I change the shader, the code is reloaded as well. Here, I am playing with the scene parameters. I change the width of the path and its color. The display is configured to loop. When code change, time just goes on. Of course, it would be possible to reset time and restart the animation. The cool shadow effect at the beginning took me half an hour to design. Without this tool, it would have taken me half a day. This is real stuff. Stupeflix is providing tools and services to create and process video. And Jarvis is the perfect tool to design new video templates for our users. The last feature I want to show you today is about time. Time is always an issue when designing and debugging. As Brett Victor would say, you need ways to remove the time dimension from your work. But it's not always trivial when designing time-dependent objects, like 3D animations, videos, or music. Using Jarvis, you can move through time and see instantly the impact on your OpenSync graph scene. To get some help, here comes the usual suspects. Read the docs. Installing is done through pip. And finally, you can contribute through GitHub. So what is Jarvis? It's an assistant that helps you in your daily work, starting with Python coding and data inspection. But future additions will include instant switching between code versions and comparison, running your tests as soon as a related code change, and much more to come. Please don't follow me around with it either, because I feel like I'm going to catch on fire spontaneously. Just stand down. If something happens, then come in. And again, let's bring it up to 2.5. 
Three, two, one.